Hey, what is going on guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out the Spectacular Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1. So, without further ado, let's take a look at this book. Here is the cover of the book. I didn't have a preference, so I just went with the Tarantula cover, which was, I think, the first one I saw. Here is the spine of the book, as they are doing it now with the new spines. It's got that small print, but honestly, this one doesn't look too bad, I think. And here is the back of the book, showcasing every single issue that is collected in this omnibus. Always appreciate when they do that. So before we jump into the book, this omnibus collects Spectacular Spider-Man, the 1976 series, 1 through 42, and annual number 1, Amazing Spider-Man, annual number 13, and Fantastic Four, number 218. So what is this book? What makes this Spider-Man book different from the Amazing Spider-Man run? Well, when I found out what the kind of pitch for this book was, I was really excited because this book is meant to focus on some fun Spider-Man adventures with a bunch of zany villains, but also one of the main goals of the book was to give more panel time to some of Spider-Man's supporting cast, which I think is a wonderful idea because it, they are filled with iconic characters who I am always interested in learning more about. So that means people like Mary Jane, J. Jonah Jameson, Glory, Flash, and more get their moments of spotlight in here. And I've said it before, but when books put a strong emphasis on the lives of their supporting characters, it greatly helps flesh out the world our hero is living in and it makes it feel more realistic. And this book serves that purpose wonderfully. In fact, I thought I wouldn't be too fond of this book. I thought that it'd be kind of just a bunch of Spider-Man light stories, but, but I found myself really compelled by a lot of what was going on in here, and I ended up really liking this Spider-Man run, one of my favorites to be honest. I will say most of the villains Spider-Man has paired up against in here aren't the rogues gallery that we are traditionally used to, although the Lizard, Doc Ock, and Kraven do make appearances, so there's a bit of that, but a lot of it is a kind of villain of the weak thing for Spider-Man with really strange adversaries like the Tarantula, the Iguana, the Hitman, Lightmaster, or whatever his name was, I can't really remember, Swarm, and others like that. He even fights Medusa of the Inhumans at one point in here, which is an issue I really enjoyed, and as it turns out, it was written by Chris Claremont, so my Claremont fanboying gets to live on here. But yeah, guys, overall, there's just a lot of really good stuff in here, and a lot of good characters stuff like one of the things I was really really interested in as it was sort of evolving through the plot as the issues went on was Flash Thompson and you know his coming back from Vietnam and there was some stuff that went on there and we get some unraveling of everything that he kind of was going through and we learn a little bit more about some history that happened there I won't give anything away although it's not too big of spoilers, but it's just a storyline in there that I really enjoyed, so I wanted to call out that one specifically, but there's just a ton of good stuff. There's J. Jonah Jameson stuff, like I said, that is really interesting. You know, there's the Scorpion whole thing going on with him, so there's always that. And for those of you who are Spider-Man fans, but maybe lean more towards modern runs of Spider-Man, and, you know, when you've looked back and you've flipped through some of the original Spider-Man stuff, maybe some of the Spider-Man omnibus, you know, amazing omnibus volume one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. Maybe you've looked at that, you've read it, and you said, hey, you know what? This is a little dated. The writing style is not for me. My eyes are glazing over when I read this bad boy, but it's cool to see like where these, you know, iconic villains came from. And then you're maybe thinking, well, this spectacular Spider-Man book's probably like that too, except it's not filled with the iconic villains, so what am I really getting from it? Well, let me tell you. Like I said, one, the main cast of Spider-Man is so crucial to just, you know, the life of Peter Parker. I think there's even at one point in here where he says, I can't die. I don't have the right to die. So to understand Peter Parker and everything that's going on with him, it's important to understand the people in his life that he really cares about and who he's always protecting. But kind of the main point I wanted to get across from just a reading perspective is that, yeah, there is still like some datedness in reading this omnibus, but I do think it actually flows pretty well overall. 
it, it's sort of, um, it's not quite there, but like when I read old Uncanny X-Men issues, I'm like, oh, this doesn't feel that dated to me at all. I can breeze through this. I'm really interested. I'm getting really engaged in the plot and I'm eating through these issues, you know? This isn't quite at like Uncanny X-Men status for me in terms of like how much of a breeze it is to read because it's much older, but I'd put it somewhere between uh, the Amazing Spider-Man run and the Uncanny X-Men stuff. So that's where I kind of put it at for readability, just so you know, so maybe you can make an informed decision about whether you think that is, you know, something you want to pick up and give a chance. I also wanted to bring up, just because it's something that gets debated by certain factions over and over and over again, but you hear that, like, some people will say, oh man, like, comics are so political today, and I don't like that, and it's like, okay, well, whatever, but you really have to recognize that comics were always like that, and they were always pretty progressive. I mean, you can look in here, and there are things going on, like, there's education budget protests going on, and there's, like, display community stuff going on, minority communities specifically that are affected in here. Um, and honestly, there's a cool little story involving both those things with the white tiger that I really liked in this omnibus too. I'm always like really impressed by it too when I look back at some of these older stories and I'm like, man, they are really like putting their values on the page in a palatable way that is super, super fun still. And I love that. I love seeing that. And I remember when I was reading New Warriors and I was like, wow, they're tackling environmental issues. They're going after corporate greed and this is a much older book and to be honest in this book and that one a lot most of those issues do boil down to a critique of corporate greed anyway this is kind of just a mini rant for me i guess because i think people can be really silly about that kind of stuff shallow spectacle and entertainment is perfectly fine but it's so odd to me to critique art, which comic books are, for trying to dig deeper into real issues. Like, I'm always thrilled when I get to read a superhero book filled with fun and action and also feel like I'm foundationally learning more about real issues that historically have affected people and continue to do so. And by the way, I say foundationally because you shouldn't, you know, cultivate an entire world view or argument based solely off comic books. You should do deeper research into those kinds of things if you're interested in them. Anyway, this is a tangent at this point, so let me just say, for hardcore Spider-Man fans, of course you should be picking this book up. If you're a little more casual, it should definitely be on your radar, just so you can experience this type of Spider-Man book. But also, if you do decide to skip this one, I don't think you're missing out on anything too mind-blowing, especially, like I said, if you're just a casual Spider-Man reader. And for those who don't like Spider-Man, well... What are you doing here? <laughs> okay guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this book and you have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much guys.